Hello everybody and welcome back to Stellaris where I just went through and checked what we would need in order to make all of these claims. And the answer is 912 influence. That's a lot of influence and that number would be increased if we were to declare this war now. So we want to make it before we declare the war. We need to keep in mind we're making quite a lot of influence now that we're down to two civilian ships. And this one's going to be moving quite a ways before it builds its hyper relay. So we're going to head up. Well, actually, that's not quite a ways. We're going to head up over here at any rate. We do need to finish up construction on these battleships as well. And that will take some time. So destroy a build cost and build speed reduction. Sounds good. Ooh, mega cannons. We'll take Mega Cannons. Sounds good. 912 is a lot of influence. No doubt about that. So for now, that's reasonably fine. We don't have any constructions needed on our planets. And we're going to be attacking the Otharians as soon as we feel like it's a viable option. So we're going to head up over to Sapir. Yes, that does spend 24 influence, which is sad. A spectral entity has been detected by our sensors. It seems to be roaming from system to system, destroying matter around itself indiscriminately. Early observations suggest its composition and manipulation of light may make it extremely difficult to target. But one thing we've learned exploring the galaxy is that even light itself can be bent and broken. We only need to figure out how. Whether by reason or brute force, it must be possible. So where is this wraith at? It came through that wormhole. Okay, do we think we're strong enough to take it on? Maybe. Let's move into Farai, and we'll see what ends up happening here. Ah, yes. So we need to re-up our agreement here. That's actually fine. We'll just sell off some minerals and no problem whatsoever. Goodbye. That'll be okay. So this construction ship, of course, now can't make its way back over here. It's cut off by this wraith. So we'll just leave it in Astraeus for the moment. There's nothing for it to do until the wraith either leaves conceived. or is dealt with. It's going into Shatib. Okay. Technology conceived. And it actually takes out our station there, which is very rude of it. We can try to fight it here. Emphasis on try. We just finished Gamma Lasers. We can grab, say... Space-time theory. That'll be fine. We can also grab Improved Production. That'll be good, too. That will definitely improve our well production so that'll be okay and if we were to attack here we should definitely edict up it'll be interesting to see how this plays out my rule of thumb is usually 30k and we've got about 46k here so in theory we might be able to take out this race now it doesn't have any shields it's pure armor so that's not going to be great for our battleships no doubt about that but we'll see how it goes Maybe we lose, maybe we win. At any rate, we're going to need alloys. We're also full on minor artifacts, and we should do something about that. So let's discover Our a precursor insight. Cool. So that's absolutely fine. And what else would we want to do? Well, for now, that's that's okay. We're not going to be capped for a moment. I absolutely do want to make sure that our edicts are on. So we're going to turn on exotic gases as shield boost. Volatile ammunition, explosives, and reactive armor, and focusing crystals. And in we go. So yeah, we're negative on volatile moats and exotic gases, obviously. We're through its armor. Oh, we're just demolishing this wraith. Excellent. The haunting creature born from light pulses is finally neutralized. Although it remained until the very end, a ghost among the stars, and in many ways a mystery, we meticulously documented the previously unseen properties of light and energy that the Wraith put on bright display this one last time. The light has gone out, so that gives us physics research, energy weapon damage, energy credits from jobs, and we get a Leviathan Parade opportunity, and we'll definitely take that. So we should probably encourage this. Beautiful. So that's great. The race is out of here. We definitely want to turn off our edicts now. So we'll get those turned off, and we should bring these guys back on over to Mecca's for repair. I want to check to see, did we actually lose any ships here? We did. We lost a couple of Corvettes. 11, to be precise. 
That's actually not that big of a deal. So we don't quite have enough to fully reinforce that, but that worked really, really well, actually. We're going to have to build our starbase back in Shatib, but that's okay. A drone exploring the ruins on Runa 2 recently disappeared. After a short search, we found a shell that seems to have belonged to a bees. Our research drones are in no doubt that these remains are what's left of our missing drone, but they're baffled as to how the body decomposed quite this quickly. They urge caution as we continue our investigations. Disturbing. Also, I just realized they came through the wormhole in a lark. Which means this black hole is open for grabs. We would have to survey it. We don't have a science ship available. I think for the moment, we're just going to grab Shatib. That is 52 influence, which I really don't like to spend. Especially since we shouldn't have to, in theory. But it's fine. It's completely fine. We're going to get this reinforced. We're still going to require a little bit more in terms of alloys. But that's okay. We're going to get these repairs done. And that's empowered us, I think, to attack this psionic entity in Traver. So we may want to think about doing that. Since we know we're going to need a lot of influence to attack out over here, right? So, theoretically, we could definitely do that. Now we're still working on these battleships. The Corvettes are going to take a while. And that's okay. We just had to do this as soon as possible, right? So that's okay. Repairs are done here. No problem. Now, we're basically done with our core skeletal network. Although we should come up over this way and do a little bit up there too realistically. So a hyper relay out over here would be fine, and then we can queue up another hyper relay out over this direction, although we'll be lacking alloys for it. We'll have to make our way out here, and it'll take some time to get out there, so I'm really not too concerned about that. Yep, next month tick. Let's go. Okay, we'll get to that in a moment. I want that hyper relay queued up. The strobing lights of the stellar race disperser sack were distracting to look upon. So distracting that it took a while to detect that the sack the Wraith used to generate its natural shield was leaking. After quickly confirming that exposure to the chemicals inside would not cause a total ecological collapse on Mecha's Prime, our science drones focused on analyzing the effects the gas had on our atmosphere. It seems like the emitted chemicals have fused with our mesosphere and dispersed concentrated energies surprisingly well. So well that if we release the rest of the disperser's contents, there would be a noticeable increase in planetary defensiveness. Okay, that's probably not all that useful. Let's incorporate it into the performance. I don't actually care about the defense of mechas, because in theory, if anyone's attacking our capital, we've got other problems. So I'm not too concerned about that one. It's fine. The Caspadine station should probably get a pair of gun batteries and a target uplink computer, though. We can certainly do that. Fantastic. And we should probably move this transport ship back and think about getting ourselves additional army units here. So let's grab in the army builder, let's grab up 5, 10, 15, 20 assault armies. There we go. So that's underway. That's in preparation, of course, for attacking the, the Otharian Trade Association. So that'll be fine. Another log has been found and translated. First mate Ethar speaking. Captain has been safely stowed in utility closet C. That bumbling fool is to blame for everything. I'm in command now. Chief Engineer Zarbla is working on a subspace transmitter. Without one, I fear we'll never get rescued as we're too far off the corporate trade routes. Pervax lost another eye. Likely, likely won't last the day. Well, that's unfortunate for Pervax. We do have this mining world over here. Do we actually want this to be a mining world? No, we don't. We absolutely want this to be a tech world. So that is going to be a tech world, and we're going to, of course, put in a research lab there. Beautiful. This tech world here, of course, we could use an additional research lab on, and we'll put that on. This forge world actually needs a tile blocker clearance, and we'll get that going. We also got ourselves a tradition here. So building and district upkeep would be great. We're going to def definitely reduce that. Wonderful. So things are looking good here. 
Attention bees, if you have need of others to fight your battles for you, know that Larongo mercenary fleets are now available for hire. Yes, you heard correctly. Okay, good to know. We've already defeated them twice, so I'm not sure they're actually the uh, best mercenary fleet in the galaxy, according to their claim, but yeah, that's Technology probably not the case. Conceived. Hey, resources from jobs. I like it. So next we're going to grab something like, I mean, this is really more of a reroll than anything, but unlocking fortresses would be useful eventually. Maybe not super useful right now. Our battleships are now done and we're working through the Corvettes. Latent psionic powers have begun to manifest in certain individuals belonging to the Valert species, according to leaked reports from authorities in the Valert Enlightened Kingdom. This must be a fairly recent development, since we have no record of Valertians ever displaying psionic abilities on file. According to the leaked reports, these powers are so far limited to a very small minority of the Valert species as a whole. Scientists in the Valert Enlightened Kingdom have offered no explanation. How very peculiar. Okay, so we know that we have a few more Corvettes to build here, right? We should also have some ship upgrades to be done. Yes, we're going to go to Guardian Point Defense, and Ripper Auto Cannon is fine, and then we're going to sit with Gamma Laser. We're still good on power. No issues there. This is on Picket. That's fine. Afterburners. Yep, this all looks good. Right, a ship of this design is currently being built. So we're going to cancel these Corvettes for the moment. And we're going to save this upgraded version. There we go. Now, destroyers. We can definitely go to Gauss Cannons, and we can also go to Gamma Lasers. We're doing fine on power, but we can upgrade to advanced shields here. We're actually still doing fine on power, which is mildly surprising to me. Beautiful. Get that going. Next up, we've got our cruisers. Now, we've got auto cannons in these large slots right now. This is set to go to medium range, which I think is probably reasonably accurate. We'll go to gamma lasers. That's okay. The thing about auto cannons is they're quite short range, right? So that's the main concern there. We'll boost up our power here, but of course, now we're low on power. So we're going to have to drop one of our auxiliary fire control, and we'll put in an improved reactor booster to cover that particular gap. And finally, battleships, which are just running large advanced railguns right now. We're just having them sit back as artillery, and for the moment, that is okay. So yeah, they're in artillery range. We'll just upgrade these to large Gauss cannons. We also want to run advanced shields, and surprisingly, we have the power for this. So we'll save that, and that's all good. Now, I do want to queue up the Corvettes here first. So that's going to be six Corvettes. And then we're going to start working on upgrades. So something kind of like that. That's going to take some time. No doubt about that. How are we doing on our construction ships? Uh, where are they? Okay, available. there they are. That's fine. Yeah, that's no longer on cooldown. Whatever. No concerns at all there. So we're going to finish our hyper relay in Drismach. Looks good. We're going to be finishing up in C4 as well fairly soon. But it's going to be a while before we have all these upgrades ready to go, right? Absolutely, it's going to be a while. The question is, how long are they actually going to take? Ah, we just finished up terraformation over here. Slave pop resource output and enslaved pop ratio? We've also got a research boom. Interesting. We're going to go colonize that, and we'll see how much of that actually remains. So we do want to head into Caspadine and build a Hyper Relay we a blocker. We're going to have to wait until the month tick here. There we go. And we'll get that Hyper Relay underway. And then, of course, we want to go into Borbagon. We need to go to Borbagon and Tiana Vec to get all of this done. The day has arrived. A massive amount of sensory drones were in place and ready to give us an exacting exploration of the race disperser sack. As the study began, for a moment, our entire consciousness focused on Mecha's Prime, to absorb the study of the anomalous item which preoccupied us so. Several drones caught up in precarious situations were injured in the momentary distraction, and a few were even lost. So great was our fascination. After the initial study was complete, we decided to move it to the center of our cluster on Mecha's Prime, where the specialized sensory drones will continuously observe it. 
We placed it down almost reverently and continued to dedicate a part of our consciousness to the observation. In the race disperser sack, we have found ourselves. So plus 15% unity from jobs, plus 10% happiness, we get a bunch of unity. Cool. That's actually a lot of unity. So that's absolutely great. And we can go into our relics here. Oh, it's not a relic. Okay, never mind. <laughs> that's fine. We, could, we can probably start working on this archaeological site over here eventually, but we don't have any free science ships right now. Well, we actually do. We have this one. And we should head up to the Signs of Voltam activity up here first. We'll get that done. Technology so that'll be okay. Conceived. There's that fortress. Okay, I'm not too concerned about the fleet command limit at this moment. Dropping our deviancy is maybe not terrible, but tile blocker clearances sound pretty useful. So we'll do that for now, and then we'll head down to Borbagon. We are up to 420 influence, so that's, you know, nice. And then we'll make a couple of claims over this way. Like that. So now we know that we need just these, right? And we'll make our way through that slowly. We only have secondhand intel on their diplomatic packs, but we know that they're inferior to us. And we're heavily working on upgrades, right? So... This is going to get substantially stronger. We're already at double 30k. So, that's great. Ah, we also just finished up this, and we could discover an Elgate Insight. Sure. Why not? That'll do. As we interpret the data crystals from the caves on Runa 2, we begin piecing together a picture of a troubled planet. The planet was once the center of a prosperous civilization, known as the Elani Foundation. During that civilization's latter years, the Alani turned more and more to the hoarding of knowledge instead of more material matters such as procreation. As a result, their population fell rapidly. Alarmed by their dwindling numbers, their leaders attempted to find a technological solution for immortality. Records become scarcer around this point, although it appears to predate whatever, whatever cataclysm forced them underground. And it's not clear yet what results their effort yield, yielded. Okay, cool. So that's all fine. It's going to take a while to move through these upgrade queues. That's for sure. Yeah, we're almost halfway done with upgrading this fleet. And then this one isn't even started yet. So we're like 25% done with our upgrade queue. That's okay. No actual problem there. 9.23 influence right now. How are we doing on our force projection? Okay, we could definitely bring that number up. No doubt about that. So this construction, construction ship is now is done. We could start filling in all of these other other Our areas, but I'm going to disband this construction ship. Now that we have our backbone done, I'm not going to prioritize getting all of these others filled in. Although we will eventually do it. We'll just use this construction ship so that we're building up more influence to throw into attacking these guys is the idea. Drones from the From Beyond have succeeded in retrieving a precursor artifact belonging to the ancient Voltam civilization from Telemi's Mar 2A. The mind has increased its collective knowledge of their history. Excellent. So, how many more of these do we actually need? Actually, that's it. After intense study of our recovered Voltam artifacts, scientists on Mecha's Prime have managed to deduce the exact galactic coordinates of Voltamar. It's right here, right next to our capital. The home system of the ancient Voltam civilization. We should launch an expedition to this system before someone else beats it to us. That is not a threat, given its location. We will head on over here and research the projects in the system, as well as surveying it. And then we'll probably head to Bayam after that. But for now, this will definitely do. So that's all looking good. We're going to be attacking the psionic entity up here, I think, once we've finished our upgrades. And actually, I want to move that colony ship up. Where is that? I don't want to do all of the upgrading before the colony ship. Let's just get the colony ship underway. There we go. Move that up to the top. And let's get that colony ship done. And we're going to use half of our production to work on the colony ship, and the other half is going to be on that special project. project is complete. We also need to sell off some minerals. There we go. The shattered remnants of the Voltam homeworld reveal that it underwent a massive extinction event some 12 million years ago, caused by the detonation of some kind of antimatter device. From the ruins that remain on the planet's surface, we've learned that Voltam society experienced a radical ideological shift a century before their extinction. 
Their new philosophy posited that the entire universe was an artificial reality, which all sapient beings had been unwill unwittingly plugged into for the amusement of some higher power. The Voltam undertook increasingly radical attempts to forcefully disconnect themselves from the simulation, most of which involved mass suicide. They finally concluded that only the simultaneous disconnection of billions of individuals would destabilize the system enough to grant them freedom. At an agreed upon hour, Voltam everywhere killed themselves by any means possible. Those who refused to take part in this mass suicide were too few to repopulate the species, and so the Voltam faded into obscurity and eventual extinction. Fascinating. So we get a lot of minor artifacts out of that, Unity and a bunch of research, and we get the secrets of the Voltam minor artifact. Okay, so the Reality Perforator. Minus 10% top amenities usage is nice. Perforate reality for powerful temporary combat advantages. That sounds useful. Also, we can do Secrets of the Voltop, which we'll do. Fantastic. So we can also get ourselves upkeep from jobs, complex drone output, or build cost and build speed for districts and buildings. We'll take the complex drone output for now. That sounds great. We also need a new society research, and that is going to end up being something. <laughs> I guess archaeology skill? That's fine. We can grab the curator archaeology lab. So this tech world over here needs jobs, and that will of course be a research lab. This construction ship, which is now our only construction ship, requires orders, and it will head over to Tiana Vec and get that done before it heads over to Voltamar, and we're going to grab that system. Technology conceived. Beautiful. What tech was this? Physics research from brain drones. I like it. So we could go for advanced combat roles. We could go for hyper shields. For the moment, I think advanced combat roles does make sense. So we'll take that. Mega cannon would be good, but I think that'll only be useful for our Titan, ultimately. It won't even be useful for our battleships at this time. But that's okay. This aggro world requires jobs, and it's of course maxed out for agriculture right now, unless we were to build in hydroponics farms, which we could do. We could do that. We could build a hive district to solve the food issue, and then hydroponics farms to get agro drone jobs. I think we that's reasonable. An the geoscape of Voltamar 1A is dominated by what appear from orbit to be silvery metallic crystals of dimensions never before seen. From orbit, they eerily resemble skyscrapers. Closer study is warranted. Indeed it is, and that's not going to take very long either. So that sounds great. Technology conceived. Archaeology skill. Okay, looks good. Let's go for climate restoration. And let's also grab advanced afterburners. Beautiful. So are we done upgrading these ships yet? No, we're not. We're probably going to break 30k on both of these. Detailed analysis of the enormic me enormous metallic crystals. Enormic? I, that, that's definitely not a word. Dominating Voltamar 1A's landscape have defied all expectations. Science officer Oberkoid is excited to reveal that these oversized crystals are in fact composed of trillions upon trillions of deactivated nanites. Their molecular structure matches no known empire's nanotechnology signatures, making their point of or origin indeterminable. They may have been deposited on the planet by some unknown spacefarers for an unknown purpose. As far as Oberkoid can tell, the nanites compiled themselves into perfectly oriented crystalline lattices and replicated until a point at which they became deactivated. While the crystals they created do in fact resemble buildings, they're entirely uniform in composition and cannot possibly have served any such purpose. Cool, so we get an Elgate Insight and some nanites out of it. Well, that'll be useful. We're not really ready to open the Elgate yet, but we'll get there for sure. So that'll be fine. What else do we have going on here for buildings? Nothing, actually. Cool. That's absolutely fine. We have the so there's Voltamar done. Next, we're going to go up to Bayum, and we're going to excavate that site. This planet has played host to a mammalian society of compulsive gatherers and hoarders. Their labyrinthine city is littered with junk, their towering ramshackle buildings pieced together from scraps of repurposed materials. As far as the eye can see are mountains of knickknacks, ornaments, and artifacts. The tiny rat-like inhabitants did not produce any goods of their own, but were proficient spacefarers. Hang on a moment. I see this up here. The Valert? Okay. 
but were proficient spacefarers who likely pilfered the things they needed, as well as a whole lot of things they did not need from other alien cultures. Okay, cool. So, we also got this, another translated log, running out of food. Ate our dead five cycles ago, but not enough to last us. We had a vote and decided to eat the captain. Engineer Zarbla is still working hard on subspace transmitter. She assures me it's nearly complete. It looks very complex. Pervax's last secondary appendage has shriveled up and turned magenta. Death is near. Curious indeed. So, apparently the Valert are planning on declaring on us. What do we know about them? They're equivalent to us? Interesting. I wonder if they have in diplomatic packs that we don't know about. We'll find out. It is time to put a cut in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that. And next episode, we're going to take Voltimar. Absolutely. There's no doubt about that. And we'll see if the Valert do end up declaring on us. Hopefully they don't, because we're really close to declaring on the Otharians. Really, really, really close. I'm going to make claims on these two systems here, which of course means that we need just like 300 additional influence, probably a little over 300, to get that ready to go. You can leave your offerings to the engagement gods in the form of likes, comments, subscribes, and bell ringings, and a very special thank you to all of the channel members for making this video possible, including ALS Gamer, Shadow Wolf, Andy McGar, Spartan News, Nick Smarty, Dimitri H, Punching the Microphone, Soccerman 12 UK, Kentogan, and all the rest. And of course, you. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to support the channel, you can click the join button down below the video, and as always, I will see you all next time.